the book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Mm -hmm. uh, he maketh me to lie down. Yeah, read the whole chapter. Read the whole chapter. Then we can start from the beginning. The book of Psalms, chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He healed me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, read verse 6 again. Last verse. Uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, so now we're going to go over Psalms 23. Okay, Psalms 23. So let's start from the beginning now. Psalms 23, verse 1. The book of Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The word one day goes into lack. The word one day goes into lack. I shall not lack. Okay? So let's deal with that word first. Give me um, the book of Deuteronomy 28. Um, Deuteronomy 28, uh, verse 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. In what? And in want of all things. And in want of all things. Come on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So now what Moses is teaching us here says, therefore shall thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. The Lord will send our enemies, enemies against us for what? For hunger. Okay. And in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. The word want goes into what? Lack. If you lack food, you must go to your enemy. If you lack thirst, you must go to your enemy. If you are thirsty, you must go to your enemy. If you need clothes, you must go to your enemy for that. Okay? So the word want there goes into lack. The word lack, want is lack, lack, lack. Okay? Let's go back. Psalms 23 verse 1. The book of Psalms 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You see, the Lord make is my, it me to write down. Wait, wait, wait. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Meaning, I shall not lack. Because the Lord will what will provide for us. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of John, chapter 10. John 10. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay? John, chapter 10, verse 11. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. I'm the what? The good shepherd. Give. I am the good shepherd. Uh -huh. Go ahead. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You see that thing? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Who is the shepherd? Christ. Christ is the good shepherd. Okay. Jump down to verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep mm -hmm. and I'm known and I'm known of mine. He says, I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Jump down to the 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice. And they shall be one fold and one shepherd. They shall be one fold and one shepherd. Christ is talking about himself. Give me that in Hosea real quick. 
Hosea chapter 1, verse 11. The book of Hosea chapter 1, verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and so they shall one, come. On. So that one head is that shepherd, okay, which is Jesus the Christ. He's the shepherd. Come on. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Israel. Okay, now go back to Psalms 23, verse 1. The book of Psalms of 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. So the shepherd is talking about who? Jesus the Christ. He's the great shepherd. Okay? He is the great shepherd. Come, give me that in Ezekiel real quick. Let me see something. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 22. Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. Mm -hmm. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into kingdoms anymore, into two kingdoms anymore at all. Mm -hmm. So now what, what Ezekiel is saying is the same thing that Hosea said. Go, go ahead. Verse 23. Neither shall they defile themselves any, neither shall they defile themselves anymore with the idols, nor with the detestable things, mm -hmm. nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of all the dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So they shall they, so they, so shall they be my people and I will be the God. Come on, verse 24. So verse 23 is going into when the Lord is going to redeem us from his nations and he's going to wash our sins. Okay, come on. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall have one shepherd. They shall what? And they shall all have one shepherd. So now watch this. Read verse 24 again. Read it slow for me. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd. And they all shall have one shepherd. Notice it says, David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd. Come on. They, they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. So now you notice it says, and David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgment and observe my statutes and do them. So notice it's not saying Christ. It's saying David. Watch this. Give me the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 3. Romans chapter 1 verse 3. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 3. Mm -hmm. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Which was what? Made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Read that again, so you marinate, because I don't think anybody gets it. Quite, some people might not be getting that. Read that again. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 3. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Come on. Which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Which was made of the seed. So this is the subject matter is about Jesus Christ, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So what is this going into? This is going into that Christ will come from the same lineage of David. That's why it says David shall be king over them. And they shall have one shepherd and he shall rule over them this is not talking about david but he's going into christ okay give me psalms 132 verse 11. we're still dealing with the shepherd the book of psalms chapter 132 verse 11. 
the Lord hath sworn in truth unto David, mm -hmm. he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I sit upon thy throne. Read verse 11 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 132, verse 11. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I sit upon thy throne. You see that thing? Of the fruit of thy body, David, will I sit upon thy throne. So what is David saying here? Christ is speaking to David. You understand? So in Romans 1 verse 3, the Apostle Paul is repeating the same thing again. You understand? Ezekiel is saying the same thing. When he says David, he's not talking about David, but he's going into Christ. Christ will come through that lineage. Okay, go back to Ezekiel 37 verse 24. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd. Mm -hmm. They also, they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. You see that thing right there? So David shall what? He says, David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they all shall have one shepherd. Remember, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We're still thinking about the Lord here. But here, for some reason, he's saying David. Okay, we went over those couple of scriptures to show you. He's not talking about David. He's talking about Christ. Okay, give me that in Luke chapter 1. When we were going over the book of Luke, we touched on this, but we just I never really went into it. Okay, give me Luke chapter 1. Start at verse uh, 30. Luke 1 verse 30. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Come on. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And shall call his name Jesus. Okay, Mary's going to conceive and give birth to a child named Jesus. Meaning shall call his name Savior. Okay, come on. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest mm -hmm. and the lord god shall give unto him the throne of his father david you see that thing and the lord god shall give unto him the throne of his father david all this go back to psalms 132 verse 11 we just read it we read this okay psalms 132 verse 11 read that again the book of psalms chapter 132 verse 11 the Lord had sworn in truth unto David. Mm -hmm. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I sit upon thy throne. He's saying the same thing here. Go back to Luke now, chapter 1, verse 32 again. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. You see that thing? The Lord God, the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He says, of the fruit of thy body, of the seed of David, according to the flesh, he will set Christ. He will set Christ to sit upon his throne. That's what he's talking about. He is the great shepherd. Okay, come on, verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Mm -hmm. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. That's the key right there. Read verse 33 again. The key is letting you know it's not talking about David. It's talking about Christ. Verse 33 again. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Do you see that thing? Forever. How long did David rule for? Anyone? 40 years, sir. 40 years. David ruled for 40 years. So obviously, this is not talking about David. It's talking about Christ. Come on, read that again, verse 33. The book of Luke chapter 1, verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, there shall be no end. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Okay, give me that in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. The book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Come on. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, 
that great shepherd of the sheep mm -hmm. through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Read verse 20 again. That's some heavy verse right there. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. That what? That great shepherd of the sheep. That great shepherd of the sheep. Go ahead. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So Christ is that great shepherd in Psalm 23. Okay, First Peter 5 and 4. First book of Peter, chapter 5, verses 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. When the what? He, and when the chief shepherd shall appear. When the chief shepherd shall appear, come on. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. You see that thing, meaning what? We're going to we're going to get the kingdom. We will rule all nations forever. Say it again. First book of Peter, chapter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, mm -hmm. he shall receive a crown of glory that faileth not away. You see that thing? So the chief shepherd, when he appears, that's when. When the Lord returns, he is the chief shepherd. Okay, when he appears, he's going to cleanse us from our sins. He's going to deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Read it again, verse 4. I want to touch on something on that thing. Okay? First book of Peter, chapter 5, verse 4. Come on. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. When the chief shepherd shall appear, go ahead. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. He says, ye. Who's the ye? The 12 tribes of Israel. We will receive a crown of glory that shall never fade away. Give me that in First Kings chapter 1, verse 48. Watch this. He says, we shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Give me that in First Kings chapter 1, verse 48. First book of Kings, chapter 1, verse 48. Mm -hmm. And also thus said the king, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. What did he say? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Come on. Which had given one to sit on my throne this day. Uh -huh. Mine eyes even see it. You see that thing? We read about this all the time. Put a jump up to verse 43. Read verse 43. The first book of Kings, chapter 1, verse 43. Jonathan, and Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, Verily, our Lord, King David, had made Solomon king. Read that again. Had what? Had made Solomon king. So King David had set Solomon on the throne. Okay. Jump down to verse 46 now. And also Solomon sitteth on the throne of the kingdom. Read. And moreover, the king's servants came to bless our Lord King David, saying, God make the name of Solomon better than thy name, and make his throne greater than thy throne. And king and the king bowed himself upon the bed. Now, read verse 47 again. One more time. First book of Kings, chapter 1, verse 47. And moreover, the king's servants came to bless our Lord King David, saying, God make the name of Solomon better than thy name, and make his throne greater than thy throne. And the king bowed himself upon the bed. Watch this, verse 48. Now, now it's going to make sense what he's going to say. Come on. And also, thus said the king, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel which had given one to sit on my throne this day, my eyes even seeing it. So now, you see, you notice what is being said in verse 48. Verse 47, it says, King Solomon's kingdom will be greater than King David's throne. And the king bowed himself upon the bed. David died. Verse 48 now, watch this. Verse 48, and also thus said the king, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which had given one to sit on my throne this day, mine eyes even seeing it. So you notice here, right? Uh, verse 47, it says, the king bowed himself upon the bed, right? Verse 48, one more again, so you can see it. First book of Kings, chapter 1, verse 48. And also thus said the king. Stop. 
It was all, also, thus saith the king, which king is this king? That's King Solomon. And also, thus saith the king. King Solomon is now the one that is about to speak now. You know? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel which had given one to sit on my throne this day. Oh, stop, hold mine on, eyes... wait, 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 hold on. Is which had given one to sit on my throne this day, mine eyes even see you. What is Solomon saying? <laughs> okay, read verse 48 again, come on. First book of Kings, chapter one, verse 48. And also that said the king, blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, uh -huh. which had given one to sit on my throne this day. Come on. My eyes even seeing it. So I want to show you what the Apostle James was saying, actually. You see when he says, which has, has given one to sit on my throne this day, my eyes even seeing it. Okay, watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon real quick. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 17. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 17. For he had given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely, to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements. Verse 18 is what we're looking for. Come on. The beginning, ending, and mist of the times. Come on. The alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons. So King Solomon saw the beginning of time. He saw the end of time. He saw the midst of time. He saw the dark ages. He saw King Arthur. You understand? He saw, uh, he saw the Moors. You understand? So he saw Spartacus. King Solomon saw those people, our forefathers. So he says the beginning of time, the end of time, and the midst of time. Now, go back to First Kings chapter one, verse forty-eight. Uh, shalom. Uh, First Kings, come on. First Kings one forty-eight. First Book of Kings chapter one, verses forty-eight. And also thus said the king, "Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which had given one to sit on my throne this day, my mm -hmm. eyes." even seeing it. You see that thing? My eyes even seeing it. Meaning what? Solomon saw Christ. He's talking about Christ. He's not talking about himself. Yet. He's making reference to our Lord and Savior, the Christ. Okay? Go back to First Peter 5 and 4. First book of Peter. Chapter 5, verses 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So the apostle Peter is saying the same thing that King Solomon said in 1 Kings 1.48. You understand? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Where do we read that always? Give me that in Luke 1, verse 68. Luke chapter to show you that it's not talking about King Solomon, it's talking about Christ. He's the chief shepherd. Okay? I'm just giving you more precepts on that. All right? Luke 1.58. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. You see that thing? That's when the chief shepherd will appear. He has visited and redeemed his people. Go ahead. And had raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. You see that thing? He is repeating the same thing again. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Read. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Come on. The oath which is swear to our fathers, to our father Abraham. You see that thing right there? Next verse, verse, four, verse 74 is the key. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies 
might serve him without fear. That's the key right there. You understand? He's not talking about now. He wasn't talking about during the time when the Apostle Peter spoke that he was talking about the second coming of the Messiah. You understand? So now let's go back to Psalms 23, verse 1. Psalm 23, verse 1 again. The book of Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. Actually, I shall not know, want. Before you get me that, give me Hebrews 13, verse 20. Did you read that? I don't think we read that. Did you read it? Hebrews? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Read that. Uh, we read it, sir. Okay, let's go back to Psalm 23. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 1. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now you have enough pieces to understand what is being said here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because when it says, I shall not want, meaning I shall not lack. Shall, what is, the, what is the word shall mean? That's future tense, right? I shall not. Because when David spoke, when David spoke this, what was he? Anyone? Uh, couldn't hear you, sir. Uh, what was who was what was David? What was David's position at this point? Gunter. He was the king, sir. So what what did David lack anything? No, sir. He was ruling at the time. Oh, crazy. So David wasn't lacking in. So David wasn't talking about them during his time. He was talking about the last days. David was talking about the last days. Okay. That's what it says, I shall not want. All right. Read verse 1 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Watch this. Give me the book of, um, give me Joel, chapter 2, real quick. Give me Joel. He says, I shall not want. Let me just touch on that some more. Joel, chapter 2, um, verse 18, I believe, what I want. Can you look at it? The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 18. Hold on. Then will the Lord be... Hold on. Wait, wait. I need to make sure if that's what I, exactly what I want. Um, yes. Joel 2, Joel 2, verse 18. That's the one right there. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 18. Then will the Lord be jealous of his land and pity his people. Come on. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. Read. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. You see what the Lord, the Lord is, is promising us that he's going to take care of us. He will look out for us. He will take care of his people. Go ahead. But I will remove far, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. The northern army, what is that talking about? It's talking about Babylon the Great. Come on. And will drive him into a land barren and desolate, mm -hmm. with his face toward the East Sea. The East Sea is the Mediterranean Sea. The East Sea is the Mediterranean Sea. Come on. And his hinder, and his hinder part toward the outermost sea. Uh -huh. And his stink shall come up. And his ill savor shall come up because he had done great things. You see that thing? Because the Lord would have what? The Lord would redeem us from the hands of our enemies and those that despise and hate us. That is what we're reading here. Jump down to verse 23 now. Start at verse 22. Read verse 22. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. Come on. For, for the tree beareth the fruit and fig tree and the vine to yield it his strength. So that's what he's saying, I shall not want. So Joel is going into how the Lord will take care of us. Read on. Come on, verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. Come on. And he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain. And the latter rain in the first month. Meaning what? The Lord is going to take care of our crops. Whenever we plant, the Lord will make sure that we reap the fruit, that the, the benefit of the, so, the, the seed we would have sown upon the land. He will take care of us. That's what he's saying. Read. 
and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Come on. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, mm -hmm. the cankerworm, and the caterpillar, and the palm worm, my great army which I sent unto you. You see that thing, my great army which I sent unto you. He's talking about the nations here. See? Verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. And I dealt wondrously and praise the name of the Lord your God that I dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And my people shall never be ashamed. Go ahead, verse 27. And he shall know that I am in the midst of Israel mm -hmm. and that I am the Lord your God Come and on. none else. Three. And my people shall never be ashamed. You see that thing right there? That's why it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Because Joel is giving you the, he's giving you a snippet of what the Lord will do for us to a point where the day when we're not going to lack nothing, we're going to, we're going to be well taken care of by the most high. He will look out for us because right now we're living from hand to mouth. Things are bad. We're in captivity, subject to payment. But on that day, the Lord says, I'm going to take care of you, Israelites. You just do what I say. Okay? Go back to Psalm 23, verse 1. The book of Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The green pastures, what is that talking about? It's talking about a fertile land, a pleasant land. You understand? Land that is fertile, it's got everything on it. That's the green pastures making reference to. That's the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel 20, verse 6. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 6. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 6. Uh -huh. In the day that I lifted up my head unto the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 6. You know what? In the day that I lifted up. Hold on. That is a spy. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 5. And say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, in the day when I choose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, mm -hmm. and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Come on. In the day that I lift up mine hand unto them, to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into the land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. You see that thing? The land flowing with, with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Give me that in Galatians 4, 26. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. The glory of all lands. All right? The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 26. Mm -hmm. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is our motherland. That is the glory of all lands. Jerusalem is the glory of all lands. Go back to where you were at. Ezekiel 20 verse 6. The book of Ezekiel. I lost my appearance, sir. Uh, Ezekiel 20 verse 6. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20 verse 6. Uh -huh. In the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth, of the land of Egypt into a land that I spied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. So Jerusalem is the glory of all lands. You understand? Watch this. At the center of Jerusalem, guess what's located? Guess what's there at the center of the land? The Garden of Eden. Give me that in Ezekiel 36, verse 85. Ezekiel 36, verse 85. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 35. Mm -hmm. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. 
and the waste and desolate and ruined cities have become fenced and are inhabited. That's when we are that's when we are going to be upon the land. You understand? That's when we will be upon the land. But it says this land that was desolate, because right now the land is desolate, because the people is not there, we are not in the land, is become like the garden of Eden. That is the glory of all land. So go back to Ezekiel now, 20 verse 6 again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 6. Mm -hmm. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I aspired for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. So now, notice here it says, a land flowing with milk and honey. He's not talking about that it's going to be actual, meaning what? Milk and actual honey. Because when you take milk and put it together, what do you get? You're just going to get some diarrhea if you drink that, okay? Most of the time. You understand? Lactose intolerance. So it's not talking about that. Because in order for you to have milk, you need cows. You need vegetation. You understand? In order for you to get honey, you need bees. Bees need to pollinate. That means the flowers must blossom. You see that thing? That's why it says the land of milk and honey. Everybody get that? Yes, sir. Okay, all crazy. Now go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7. We're going to read down to verse 9. Deuteronomy 8, verse 7. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and tips that spring out of the valleys and the and hills. Come on. And a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a, a land of oil, a land of oil, olive and honey. You see that thing? A land of wheat is giving is letting you know this is a land that is gonna be filled with everything that we're gonna need. You understand to our food. Read. That's nine. Come on. A land wherein thou shall eat bread without scarceness. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills may dig brass. Thou mayest dig brass. Meaning what? The fruits of the land, the minerals. You understand? That's what he's going into. Okay. Let's go to the book of Second Ezra now, chapter 2. Second Ezra 2, verse 17. Second book of Ezra 2, verse 17. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, said the Lord. Read. For thy help will I send my servants Esau and Jeremy. No, 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 no. You are not focusing now. You are just rushing stuff. Read verse 18 again. Come on. Second book of Ezra chapter 2, verse 18. For thy help will I send my servants Esau and say, Jeremy. Essay, essay means Isaiah. Will I send unto you my servant? Essay, essay, that's Isaiah. Come on. And Jeremy. Jeremy, that's Jeremiah. Come on. After whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. These 12 trees goes into the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The fruits is talk about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Next verse. As many and as many fountains flowing with milk and honey. And seven mighty mountains whereupon they grow roses and lilies whereby I fill thy children with joy. You see that thing? I will, meaning future tense, I will fill thy children with joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. As long as we keep his laws, then the, the most High God will give us the kingdom. You understand? So the, the, the land of milk and honey is talk about what? The glory of all land, a fertile land. And what makes that land fertile? Let's go back. Let's go to Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 2. Um, get Genesis 2 verse 10. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 10. 
and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Come on. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So now this river, when it is there, the river went out of Eden to water the garden. You understand? And from then it was parted and became into four heads. Now watch this. Give me that in Joshua chapter 3, verse 15. The book of Joshua chapter 3, verse 15. And as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water. Uh -huh. For Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. You see that thing is for Jordan because Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. So when we're reading here, when it says, go back to Genesis 2, verse 10. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 10. And a river out of it to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So now this river is the Jordan River. Because the Jordan River is the most high God's favorite river. That's his favorite. You understand? That river, it says, it went, it watered the garden. The Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is at the center of the land of Israel. And it's the glory of all land. That's where the Lord is going to take care of you understand? Okay, go back to Psalm 23 now. Again. Psalm 23, verse 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The still waters talk about what? Peace. He's talking about peace. Peace. That's what he's talking about. You understand? The still waters is making the sense to peace. Go ahead, verse 3. He restored my soul. He does what? He, he restoreth my soul. He? he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He says, he restoreth my soul. Now we understand that the, the Lord is my shepherd. That's the Christ. I shall not want. The Lord will take care of us. He make me to lie down in green pastures. Talk about the kingdom. Okay. He says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Let me just touch on that because somebody might be asking that. Okay, give me that in, um, give me Isaiah 2. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 2. Give me Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2. Isaiah 2 verse 2. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 2 verse 2. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. So when it says, and shall, shall be exalted above the hills, meaning Jerusalem is going to be the top kingdom on earth. You're going to see it from afar even. Okay? And all nations shall flow unto it. The all nations talk about Judah and Israel. Okay, read verse 2, verse 1, so we can understand. The book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Concerning who? Judah and Jerusalem. Concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Go back, read verse 2 again. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord shall that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Go ahead. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God, of the God of Jacob. Read. And he, and he will teach us his ways. He will teach us and of his we, ways. He will teach us of his ways. Go ahead. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Mm -hmm. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. You read on. What did he say? For out of Zion shall go forth the law. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. What are we going to teach in the kingdom? The law. The law. Read the part again for out of what? For out of Zion shall go forth the law 
Out of Zion shall go forth the law. Come on. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Read. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Mm -hmm. And and they shall beat their swords in, in plowshares. Into plowshares. So plowshares and they, they shall beat their swords into plowshares. That's talk about a farming instrument. A plowshare is a farming instrument. Go ahead. That's talk about the nations now. Read. They're going to bow down to the great king. They're going to come to the city of the great king. Come on. And the spears into sprung, pruning into hook. spraining hooks. Into pruning hooks. Come on. And the spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Come on. Neither shall they learn war anymore. You see that thing? Neither shall they learn war anymore. Neither shall they learn war anymore. That's the still water. When the 12 tribes of Israel rule, the nations, the whole earth will be at peace. Understand that? When the, the 12 tribes of, of the nation of Israel, when we take hold of this Bible as we are doing now, keeping the commandments, guess what? The whole nations will be at rest. That's why the nations are waiting for the 12 tribes of, of Israel to rule. You understand? Some of them are. Some of them, they are not. You understand? But deep down, they know that I'll give an example of that. I'll prove what I'm saying. Okay. Give me that in Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter. Give me Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. I'm going to prove that thing. Okay. The book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. Mm -hmm. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. You see that thing? Right now, the righteous is not in authority. We are the righteous. We are not in authority. Watch the next part of that verse. But. When the wicked bear it rule, the people mourn. The people mourn. Because the wicked is ruling right now, the people is mourning. Because the wicked is ruling. You see that thing? So guess what? They are mourning. The reason why they don't want to rebel against America is because they are afraid of America. Because America is what? America has got guns. You understand? America is got, they've got big bombs. They got the bombs. Thermonuclear weapons. That's what they got. Go back to Psalm 23 now. Psalm 23 verse 2 again. The book of Psalms of the 23 verse 2. Mm -hmm. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Still waters going into peace. You understand? Verse 3 now. He restoreth my soul. Uh-huh. He leadeth me in the paths of the righteous for his name's sake. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now let's deal with that. He says he restores my soul. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17 and verse... Matthew chapter 17 verse 10. Matthew chapter 17. Verse 10. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? Must first, must first come. come. Uh-huh. Come on. The scribes are saying to Christ, Why do you say that Elias must first come? Come on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things and do what restore all things and restore all things elias truly shall first come and restore all things come on but i say unto you that elias is come already uh -huh. and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they list likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them read then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. You see that thing is that Elijah, now go, go, go back up to verse 11. Read verse 11. The book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 11. And Jesus answered and said unto them, 
Elias truly shall first come uh-huh. and restore all things. So Elias will come and restore all things. You understand? But their Christ is saying, Elias came already. So they knew that you were talking about John the Baptist. Now watch this. Give me that in Malachi 4 verse 4. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Mm-hmm. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, Remember which ye I the, command. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. The first thing that the Malachi is reminding us of is what? The law, the law, the law of Moses, his servant. Read that again, verse 4. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Remember the law. He's letting, this is the quote called the last book of the Old Testament, okay? He says, remember the law of Moses. Don't forget that thing. Don't forget the law of Moses. Because in the law of Moses, our salvation is written in vain. Go ahead. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb for uh-huh. all Israel. Read. With the statutes and judgments. Remember what David says. He says, he restored my soul. So Christ said the same thing. Elias shall come and restore all things. What was Christ talking about? He was prophesying about the future. What will happen before the second coming of the Messiah. But the first thing that Elijah would do, verse 5 now. This is what Elijah would do. Come on. Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the great, the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Guess what? During the course, we know that Elijah was John the Baptist. John the Baptist was Elijah. But Christ wasn't talking about what? During the time of Rome. He was talking about the last day before his second coming. That's what we're reading about here. David was talking about the same thing, that he restored my soul. He was talking about the last days that Elijah would come and restore all things. And Elijah will remind us of what? The law of Moses. You understand? Read verse 6 now. This is what Elijah would do. This is how Elijah will restore all things to us. Read. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. You see that thing? He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. The heart of the fathers is this Bible. The heart of the fathers is this Bible. Who's the father? Ezekiel, Jeremiah, John, James, Nehemiah, Nahum, Hosea. You understand? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. You understand? Joshua. Those are the fathers. He will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. The heart of the fathers is this Bible. Like who we are. What will Elijah restore unto them? Our identity, our culture, where we come from, what did we do? What must we do to come out of the conditions that we're in? That's what Elijah would do. That's what he would restore unto us. Verse 6, one more again. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 6. Come on. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. We are the children. We are the children. Elijah would come and turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Come on. And the heart of the children to their fathers. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Because guess what? The heart of the children were not the heart of their fathers. The proof of that, give me that in 2 Maccabees 4. 2 Maccabees chapter 4. 2 Maccabees chapter 4. Because this is the heart of the this heart of the children. That's why Elijah would have to come to turn the heart of the father to the children and the heart of the children to their forefathers. 2 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 15. This is the state of the heart of the children which needs, needed to be turned to the heart of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and so forth. Read. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Come on. But liking the glory of the Christians, based of all. I need some power in this thing. Come on, verse 15 again. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, but... Liking the glory of the Christians, best of all. You see that thing, the, the state of mind of the children would be what? Would be liking the glory of the Christians, the glory of our enemies, glory over them, envying them. You understand? Not, not, not going after the glory of our forefathers, but glory after the, 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 what? the mind of our oppressors. 
Come on, verse 16. Now, Let's setting say. by the honors, by reason whereof, verse 16, uh -huh. by reason whereof, so calamity came upon them. The so calamity was what? Slavery, colonization, forced migration, the lynching, the rape, the murder, the robbing, the stealing, the taking us out of our houses, the, our minerals, our resources, the fruits of our land, raping of our women, so on and so forth. That is the so calamity that came upon us. Come on. By reason of so calamity came upon them, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers. You see that thing? These are our enemies and avengers because the Lord used these enemies against us. Come on. Whose custom they followed so earnestly. Really? And unto whom they desire to be like in all things. Unto whom we desire, the children desire to be like our enemies in all things. Their dress code, what they do, how they do it, what they eat, where they stay, so on and so forth. We want to be like them, okay, in everything. Because why? Because we would forget the heart of our forefathers. Elijah would come and restore all of that unto us. You understand? Go back to Malachi 4, verse 6. The book of Malachi 4, verse 6. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Really? Lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. Meaning what? Destruction. Before the Lord would bring destruction on this earth. Give me that in John 14, 26. The book of John, chapter 14, verses 26. Come on. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. whom, whom the Father will send in my name. Come on. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I said unto you. Read verse 26 again. The book of John chapter 14 verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I said unto you. You see what it's saying? He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Through who? The mouth of the holy prophets, in the law and the prophets. The prophets said the same thing. They explained that the capital would come and remember and bring to our remembrance who we are. That's what Elijah was doing. That's how Elijah restored all things to our remembrance because he taught us the law. That's why Malachi 4 verse 4 says, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Because what will Elijah do? He will restore unto us the law. Because with the laws of God, we're going to be set free. John 8, 32. Get that? The book of John, chapter 8, verses 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That is the comforter. That will bring all things to our remembrance. You understand? The, like the what? Our identity, where we come from, so on and so forth. That's what the laws of God will do for us. That's why it says, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Jump down to verse 36 now. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. You see that thing? We shall be free indeed, because right now we are not free. What Elijah would do, he give us the, he give us the law, and we had a chance at deliverance. You understand? Go back to Malachi 4, verse 6 again. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. Come on, give me that in Sarah 48 now. Sarah 48, verse 10. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 48, verses 10. Read verse 4. We're going to jump down. Read verse 4. Actually, you know what? Read verse 4. We're going to read down. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 48, verse 4. O Elias, how wast thou honored in thy wonder, wondrous deeds, mm -hmm. and, who many, and who made glory like unto thee? So Elias is Elijah. 
Okay, the same Elijah that would be sent before the second coming of the Lord, which would turn the heart of the fathers to the children and that of the children back to their forefathers. Read. Who did raise up a dead man from, the, from death and his soul from the place of the dead by the word of the Most High? Read verse 4. Read verse 5 again. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 48, verse 5. Who did raise up a dead man from, the, from death and his soul from the place of the dead by the word of the Most High? So Elijah, he raised up a dead man from death and his soul from the place of the dead. You see that part there when it says his soul, his soul, his soul, it says he restores my soul. That's what David said. He restores my soul. That's what Elijah would do. He would restore our soul. This dead man that Elijah raised up back then in the book of Kings represented us, the 12 tribes of Israel in the last day, that our soul will be restored back to the Father. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 1. 2nd Ezra chapter 1. 2nd Ezra chapter 1 and verse. Start at verse. Hmm. Start at verse 5. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think I want 2nd Ezra. There's a better piece there. Okay. Give me that in uh, Baruch chapter 3. Baruch chapter 3, verse 4. That's the better one right there. Baruch 3, verse 4. That one is good too. But the, this one is the point. Okay, read that. The book of Baruch chapter 3, verse 4. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, mm -hmm. hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Hear now the what? The prayers of the dead Israelites. You see what he's saying? He says, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. The Israelites are spiritually dead. Give me that in uh, Proverbs 21, 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. We wandered out of the way of understanding. What is the way of understanding? Is the laws of God. You understand? That's why our soul needed to be restored back to the heart of our forefathers, which is this Bible. Go back to where he was at, Baruch 3, verse 4. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 4. Mm -hmm. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Spiritually dead, come on. And of the children which have sinned before thee and not hearken unto the voice of, of thee, thy God. For the which cause... The plagues cleave unto us. For the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. So what is the what is the plague making reference to? The curses of Deuteronomy 28. Okay. Now go back to Malak, go back to Sirach now, 48 verse 5. Sirach 48 verse 5. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 48. Verse, verse 5. 5. Uh -huh. Who did raise up a dead man from death and his soul from the place of the dead by the word of the Most High? That's exactly what's been done. That's what Elijah would do. That's why the Spirit says, remember ye the law, the law of Moses. Yes, says, and his soul from the place of the dead by the word of the Most High. How did he raise him up? How will Elijah, how would we, would we be raised up to Elijah? The word. Elijah would teach us the word. He would restore back to us who we are by bringing us the laws of God because in the laws of God there lies our identity like what he says in Isaiah 1 and 3 read on, jump down to verse 9 now okay, verse 9 read verse 8 actually, read verse 8, jump down to verse 8 who anointed kings to take revenge mm -hmm. and prophets to succeed after him we are those prophets today in the last days come on who was taken up in a whirlwind of fire and in a chariot of fiery horses. Guess what? The same way Elijah was taken up, we are going to be taken up as well. We just have to endure, brothers and sisters. Read. Who was taken up in a whirlwind and in a chariot of fiery horses, 
who was ordained for reproofs in their times. You see that thing? To Elijah, pacify. Elijah says Elijah was ordained for reproof in their times, meaning correction. That's what the prophets do. They correct the people, they teach them the law. That's what Elijah did when he restored our soul back to the past. Read. Who was ordained for reproofs in the times mm -hmm. to pacify the wrath of the Lord's judgment. Come on. Before it break forth into fury. Before the second coming, and before the destruction, before the second coming, before it break forth into fury. That's why before I come and smite the earth with a curse, like it says in Malachi 4 verse 6. Come on. To pacify the wrath of the Lord's judgment before it break forth into fury. Uh -huh. And to turn the heart of the father unto the son. Read. And to restore the tribes of Jacob. You see that thing? And to restore the tribes of Jacob. To restore the tribes of Jacob. The same thing that Malachi said, the same thing that Sirach is saying here, is rehashing the history. Okay, give me Acts 1 and 6. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. Mm -hmm. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wouldst thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? What did he say? Read that again. Wouldst thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So now when Christ came together with the disciples, the disciples started to ask him questions because they thought at this time he was going to deliver them. But it wasn't the time yet. Read verse 6 again in its entirety. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, wouldst thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You see that? Restore again. Restore again. That means it's something that was together before, now it needs to be restored back to how it was from the beginning. Restore the 12 tribes of Israel again like it was in the days of old. That is what the apostles were asking. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Zechariah 9. Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse... Zechariah chapter 9 and verse... Let me see. Hmm. No, no, not Zechariah. I need, I believe I need Jose. Let me see. One second, one second. Amos, I need Amos, not Zechariah, Amos. Amos 9 verse 11. This is what the apostles was asking. Amos chapter 9 verse 11. Let's get there. The book of Amos chapter 9 verse 11. Come on. In that day will I raise up the tabernacles of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. You see that thing? Restore again the kingdom to Israel. That is what we're reading here. Amos is prophesying what will happen in the last day. How it's going to start is going to be a spiritual awakening. Then it's going to be a physical one. You understand? Read that again, verse 11. Come on, verse 11. Uh, please repeat that, sir. Amos, Amos 9, the verse book 11. Amos, the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of the day of David that is fallen. The tabernacle of David is the 12 tribes of Israel. The tabernacle of David is talking about the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Read on. And close up the breaches thereof. And close up the breaches thereof. And all, Hold on. And close up the breaches thereof. What is a breach? When somebody has breached the wall, now the, the wall has been breached, meaning there's a hole in the wall. You know, there's a crack. Now the crack needs to be what needs to be closed up. That's talk about the split in the nation. When we are scattered among the nations all over the world, and our minds being corrupted and destroyed, being trodden underfoot by these nations. So now our soul needs to be restored back. The 12 tribes of Israel need to be gathered together. Like it says in Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Give me that in Isaiah 58 real quick. Isaiah 58 verse 13. Okay. 
Verse 12. Isaiah 58, verse 12. Verses 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. The old waste places talk about what? The tabernacle of David that is falling to restore our soul. Read. Thou shalt rise up, thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations. That's what's going on. Thou shalt be called. That's, that's what's going on right now. You understand? The most High God is raising us up, like it says in Ezekiel 37, a great arm. Come on. The repairer of the breach. No, no. And thou shalt be what? Read it again. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old, old waste places. Read. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called mm -hmm. the repairer of the breach, the restorer of parts to dwell in. The, the what? Is that the repairer of the breach? Then it says what? The restorer mm -hmm. of parts to dwell in. You see that thing? The restorer, the restorer of parts to dwell in. What are those parts? The laws of God. You see that thing? That's what Elijah would come. That's what Elijah, what, that's what Elijah would do. Elijah would come and restore the heart of the fathers to the son. And to restore the tribes of Jacob. That is what's going on now. This is proof that Elijah came and left. That's why we're waking up this day. Read that again, the last part. He says, the repairer of the what? A repairer of the breach. Mm -hmm. The restorer of parts to dwell in. You see that thing, the repairer of the bridge, the repairer, the, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Go back to Amos now. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. The book of Amos chapter 9, verse 11. Mm -hmm. In that day will I raise up the tabernacles of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. Come on. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of the, as in the days of old. I will build it as in the days of old. Meaning what? During the time of David and Solomon, the twelve tribes were all together as one. That is what the Lord would do. The great shepherd, the chief shepherd. That's what he did. And later on, before his second coming, he sent Elijah to what to pave the way for us. When Elijah paved the way for us, guess what? We are paving the way for Christ, just like John the Baptist was doing. Okay, which is Elijah anyway. Now go back to go go to Acts 15 verse 16. Acts chapter 15 verse 16. Read that. Acts 15 verse 16. The book of Acts chapter 15 verse 16. After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. So what Luke is saying, because Luke wrote the book of Acts, Luke is saying the same thing that Amos was saying. You understand? Luke is saying the same thing that Amos was saying. He's quoting the book of Amos. That's what he's doing. Give me that in Acts chapter 18 now. Acts chapter 18. Mm, no, Acts chapter 3. Give me Acts chapter 3 and verse... Give me Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Mm, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Acts chapter 3, start at verse 20. You know what? Start at verse 19. Let's just start at verse 19. Acts 3 verse 19. The book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Uh -huh. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The time of refreshing is what? The time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now the Lord is refreshing us. You understand? He's, to, he's restoring unto us back our identity. Read before his second coming. Come on. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which, which before was preached unto you. Which before was preached unto us by whom? By the mouth of the prophets. From the time of Moses, read. 
whom the heaven must receive until the times of re re restitution, until the times of restitution of all things. Stop right there. Which read, God. Hold on. Read verse 21 again. The book of Acts chapter 3, verse 21. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. It says, whom the heaven must receive. Whom the heaven must receive. The book of Acts chapter 3, verse 21. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Stop right there. It says, whom the heaven must receive. When was the Lord received by the heaven? Give me Acts 1 and 9. Whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Get that? The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of his sight. You see that thing? That's when he was taken up. That's when the heaven received him. He was taken up in a chariot. Go back to Acts chapter 3, verse 21. The book of Acts chapter 3, verse 21. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Come on. Which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Since the beginning of time, they spoke about what? They spoke about the second coming of the Messiah. Understand that? Watch this. Let me do this, okay? So we can understand the definition of this word right here. All right. One second. Mm. Okay, read that. Read that definition of restitution. Definition of the word restitution. Mm -hmm. Noun. The restitution of something lost no, or stolen. No, 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 you are reading it wrong. Come on. Read, you are messing me up, man. Read, this, read, read that part again. Read the third definition. Yes, sir. The definition of the word restitution. The restoration uh -huh. of something lost uh -huh. or stolen to its proper owner. You see that thing? Our, our guess what? Actually, you know what? Let's get the definition of this. Read that part. Read the definition. Watch this. The ANC had demanded the restitution of lives seized from black people. You see that thing? That's a beautiful thing right there. Okay? Guess what? We must, what must be restored back to us? Our identity. Our identity is must be restored back to us. That's why when people come to camp to come and learn, we teach them identity, their nationality. Then we go into the laws. We go into their sins and we teach them repentance. How to return back to the Father. That's what Elijah did. That's what he was, we are doing this day. You understand? Acts chapter 3, verse 21. Again. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 21. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Read. Which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. You see that thing? It says, until the times of restitution of all things. Meaning what? Until the Most High God restores everything back to us in terms of what? The law, our identity, us keeping the laws in Christ. That's what the Lord is returning back to us. It's restoring back to us. Our identity, who we are, what must we do to maintain what is written in this Bible so we can get the kingdom when we stand the test. Restitution means restoration of something lost. What it was lost? We lost our culture, our identity. Everything about us we lost. And everything about us is written in this Bible. So Elijah will return that will turn the heart of the father to the children and the heart of the children back to their forefathers before the second coming of the Messiah. You understand? Now let's go to Psalms 23 now. Psalm 23, verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 3. Mm -hmm. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the parts of he leadeth me in the parts of the, of righteousness for his name's sake. So you see that thing? The path of righteousness is the law. The path of righteousness is the law. Okay? Read on. Verse 4 now. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 4 again. The book of Psalms of 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So David is saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What is the valley of the shadow of death? Give me Psalms 107, verse 10. Psalms 107, verse 10. Let's see what is the value of the shadow of death. The book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 10. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Come on. Being bound in affliction and iron. Being what? Being bound in affliction and iron. And iron. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. The shadow of death, what is that talking about? He's going to tell you in the next part of the verse. Being bound in affliction and iron. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Verses 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall thou, thou serve thine enemies, mm -hmm. which the Lord shall send against thee. Come on. In hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he hath destroyed thee. It says, he shall put a yoke of iron, a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. Now let's go back so we can better understand what David is saying. Psalms 107 verse 10. The book of Psalms chapter 107 verse 10. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Come on. Being bound in, aff in affliction and iron. So the shadow, the value of the shadow of death is talk about our place of slavery, talk about captivity, slavery, bondage. That is the share, that is the value of the share of death. The value of the share of death is captivity, being bound in affliction and iron. When it says such a sit in darkness, this darkness is talk about what? The darkness making reference to sin. Give me the right chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 15. The right 11 verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 16. Uh -huh. Come on. Uh, sorry about that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 16. Come on. Chapter 11 verse 16. Mm -hmm. Error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners. With what? With sinners. With sinners, come on. And evil shall wax old with them that glory therein. You see that thing? So error and darkness talk about sin. It says that they are beginning together with sinners. Because what do sinners do? They break the law. They sin. That's the darkness. You understand? Go back. Psalms 107 verse 10. Once again. The book of Psalms. Chapter 107 verses 10. Mm-hmm. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. You see that thing, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, meaning we're sitting in sin, in slavery. We're in slavery because of our sins. That's the darkness. Being bound in affliction and iron. Right now, the yokes of iron are no longer necessary. But where is the yokes of iron? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 17 to 16. This is where the yokes of iron are now. The yokes of iron are no longer on our, our chain, our neck. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 17, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 17, verses 15. 16, one second. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 17, verse 16. So then, whosoever there fell down or straightly kept, shut up in a prison without iron bars. You see that thing? Now we are shut up in a prison without iron bars. The shadow of death, the slavery is where? It's mental, it's spiritual. 
You understand? Go back to where he was at. Psalms 107 verse 10, again. The book of Psalms, chapter 107, verses 10. Mm -hmm. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. Come on. Because they rebelled against the words of God and contempt the counsel of the Most High. You see that thing? We rejected the counsel of the Lord, which is his law. See? Therefore, he brought down their hearts with labor. Come on. They fell down, and there was none to help. There was none to help. When it says there was none to help, give me that in Deuteronomy 28. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. It says there was none to help. What does that mean? There was none to help. Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 29. And thou shalt grow at noonday as the blind grow in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. When it says no man shall save thee, meaning what? There shall be none to help. Because there's a lot of our, 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 our forefathers that raised up. You understand? During the 60s, Many, many of them, okay? You had you Chris Honey, you had, um, you had the, the Soweto Uprising, you had the Sharpsville Uprising, okay? You have the Ibato Uprising, you understand? You know, Kijima, they rose up, but they did not what? They did not succeed. Steve Biko, they rose up, but they didn't succeed. Oliver Tambo, they rose up, they did not succeed. You understand? You had um, Kwame Kuruma. You had, um, what, what's this one? You had uh, Malcolm X. You had Martin Luther King Jr. You had um, Thomas Sankara. You had, you had Sankara, okay, Burkina Faso. You had many of our forefathers that rose up, but they what? They, none of them could help us. None of them could deliver us out of the, the hands of our enemies. None of them could do that. Why? Because the one thing that our black, those black leaders did, the one thing that, that was common among all of them, your, your Marcus Gavi and all of them, yeah, they were sincere, they loved their people. One thing they did not do though was what? They never required the people to change. That was the problem. They never required the people to change. That was only, that was all, that was the problem. That is the common thing in all of them. They never required the people to change. Now, because the Lord says he will send the apostles last, guess what? Now, according to the scripture, we require the people to change according to the Lord. They must repent, keep the laws of God. That's the difference between us and them. Okay? Go back to where he was at. Psalms 107 verse 12. The book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 12. Read. Therefore he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. There was none to help. Come on. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them. Out of the distress. I'm sorry, read that part again. The book of Psalms, chapter 107, verse 13. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of the distress. You see, the only one we cry to the Lord, that's when our prayers are going to be answered. That's when we're going to come out of our distresses. Not when we pray to men, not when we put our trust in men, but we put our trust in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why it says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. How did he do that? He sent Elijah to restore what our soul. Read verse 14. He brought them out of darkness. Out of sin. And out of, hold on. He brought them out of darkness. Out of sin. According to Sarah 11, 16. Read. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. And shadow of death. Captivity. Right now is mental captivity that we've been taken out of, that we are being delivered from. Then physical deliverance is coming when the Lord returns. Read. And break their bands in sunder. And break their bands, meaning our bondage, our, your, our law escape. That's what the Lord would do. That's what the Lord is doing right now. Okay? He says he brought them out of darkness. When Christ came, also he did the same. 
Then he sent Elijah. Elijah came, he did the same thing also. Okay, go back. Go back to Psalm 23. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in the place of our captivity, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, the Lord is with us. Okay, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What is the rod? Give me that in Psalm. Give me that in Proverbs, I'm sorry. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Proverbs. Proverbs 22, verse 1, 5, verse 15. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verses 15. Mm -hmm. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Mm -hmm. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. You see that thing? So the rod is used for correction. The rod is used for correction. Okay? Give me that in Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, verse 13. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 23, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Withhold not correction from a child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. If you beat him with the rod, he's not going to die. The rod is used for correction. Watch this, Proverbs 29, verse 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom. You see that thing? The rod and reproof give wisdom to a child. Read. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. You see that thing? So go back to Psalm 23, verse 4 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verses 4. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What is the rod used for? For correction. What is the staff used for? For support. A staff, you see the old, old men walking with a staff? Uh-huh. What do they use that staff for? For support. Watch this. Give me that in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 21. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. You see that thing? Jacob was leaning upon the top of his staff. Watch this. We're coming back here. Give me Proverbs 3, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Listen now. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Come on. The book of Proverbs 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. You see that thing? Don't lean on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. What are we supposed to lean on? Go back to Hebrews 11, 21. The book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as no, no. by... As... Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 21. Oh. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 21. By faith, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped. Leaning upon the top of his staff. Leaning upon the top of his staff. Go back to Psalm 23 now. Verse 4. The book of Psalms, 23 verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You see that thing? The rod and the staff will comfort you. The rod is used for correction. The staff is used for support. Both of which they do what? They comfort us. 
Romans 15 verse 4. The book of Romans. Chapter 15 verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime time were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that thing? Comfort of the scriptures. Comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The scriptures is what comfort us. Give me that. There's another one. First Maccabees 12 verse 9. First book of Maccabees. Chapter 4. 12. Chapter 12, verse 9. Verses 9. 12. 12. 12, verse 9. First book of Maccabees, chapter 12, verses 9. Mm -hmm. The first book of Maccabees, chapter 12, verses 9. Therefore, we also, albeit, we need none of these things for we, for that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. You see that thing? We have the holy scripture, we have the holy books of scriptures in our hands to comfort us. So go back to Psalm 23 verse 4. The book of Psalms 23 verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, mm -hmm. for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Okay? So the rod and the staff is talking about the scriptures. The valley of the shadow of death is talking about, talk about captivity. Okay? Verse 5 now. Come on. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Read. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. He says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What is the table? Because the Lord says, He is preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies, in the midst of our enemies. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Habakkuk 2, verse 2. Habakkuk. Let's see what the table is. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. What must you do? That he and make it plain upon tables. Make it plain upon tables. Come on. That he may run that readeth it. You see that thing? He says, Write the vision and make it plain. Make it plain upon tables. Make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it. Hmm. Give me Isaiah 30 verse 8. Isaiah 30 verse 8. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 30 verses 30. Verse 8. Verse 8. Isaiah 30 verse 8. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table uh -huh. and note it in a book. And do what? Note it in a book. And note it in a book. So the table is the book. That book is the Bible. Come on. And note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So the table that is being prepared before us in the presence of our enemies, guess what that is? The Bible. The Bible is being prepared for you, brothers and sisters, in the spirit of Christ. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of, our, of my enemies. Watch this. Give me that in Psalm 50 verse 21. Psalm chapter 50 verse 21. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 verse 21. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself, uh -huh. but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. You see that thing? The Lord says he's going to set us in order before the eyes of the nation. The nation is going to see us right with us. 
The nations are going to see us coming into this Bible and applying that which is written. The nations are not going to know how we are decoding this book because this book is the book of the Israelites. It's not the book of all nations. Only the 12 tribes that keep the laws of God can rule this Bible the right way. You understand? Read that again, verse 21. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 21. Mm -hmm. These things hast thou done. These things hast thou done. And I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was I was altogether such as one, such and one as thyself. Mm -hmm. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. You see that thing? That's what the Lord is doing right now. The Lord is setting us in order before their eyes. Watch this. Give me Joel chapter 2. Give me Joel chapter 2. Start at verse, start at verse 4. Joel 2 verse 4. We're going to start there. The book of Joel chapter 2 verse 4. Neither shall one trust another. Mm -mm. No, no. Joel 2 verse 4. Oh, um, yes, sir. The book of Joel 2 verse 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. So it says the appearance of them. Who said them? The us that the Lord is setting in order before our enemies. It says the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. You ever seen the, the horses in battle array? Horses going to war? You understand? With their riders on top of them? That's how we are at camp, like horses going to war. Read. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. The tops of mountains talk about the top governments on earth. America, China, Europe, Russia, Asia, and Saudi Arabia, so forth. Read. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble uh -huh. as a strong people sit in battle array. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's what we're doing right now at camp. Read that again, verse 5. The book of Joel, well, chapter 2, verse 5. Read. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of flames of, like the noise of flame of fire that like, devoured the stubble. It says, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble. Because what is the fire that we're bringing? The laws of God, that's the fire that we're bringing. Give me Jeremiah 5.14. We're we coming back here. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verses 14. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, thus said the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. Come on. And this people would Read. and shall devour thee. You see that thing? That is the flame of fire is making reference to. But it's also going into what? It's going into the last day. Meaning what the Lord returns. But before the Lord returns, the fire that we're going to be spitting out of our mouth is the word of God. Go back to Joel now. Chapter 2 verse 5. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 5. Read. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble. Mm -hmm. As a strong people sit in battle array. As a strong people sit in battle array. Come on, watch this. Before they face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. Read verse 6 again. Read it right. There's some what you're skipping here. Verse 6 again. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 6. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. Uh -huh. All faces shall gather blackness. It says, before their face, the people shall be much pained. Guess what? When we arrive at camp, the people are pained because they understand what time it is. It's war time. You understand? We are a sign that, guess what? We are a sign that something bad, that something evil is coming on this earth. They have never seen anything like this. So we are a sign that something evil is coming on this earth. Don't get it twisted. The nations know exactly what is going on. Next verse. They shall run like mighty men. Mm -hmm. 
They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall what? And they climbed the wall like men of war. You ever seen men climbing the wall, overthrowing a city? That's what we're doing now with the word of God. We're climbing up the wall, the spiritual wall, the spiritual towers that they built for us so that we do not what? So we remain in captivity. Right now we're climbing those spiritual walls. Those spiritual walls is what Christianity, Islam, politics, Buddhism, Egyptology, Scientology. Those are the spiritual walls that we are climbing up. They are climbing upon with the word of God. Read that part again, verse 7. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Come on. They shall march everyone on his ways. Read. And, and they shall not break their ranks. I need you to read verse 7 with some power. Come on. Verse 7 again. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 7. Read. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall climb they the shall... wall. Hold on. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone in his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. That's what you are seeing this day. That's what you are seeing this day. We have Bible prophecy coming to pass this day. Understand that. The, the Lord is about to return. The second coming of the Messiah. When you see the nation of Israel waking up like this, the, the nations are pained by just looking at us. They understand what time it is. I need you brothers to understand this thing. Okay? Read verse 7 again. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. Uh -huh. and they shall not break their ranks. Watch this. Jump down to verse 11 now. Come on. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. What will the Lord do? <laughs> the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Guess what the Lord is doing right now? How is the Lord uttering his voice before his army? We teach his word. That's how the Lord is uttering his voice before his army. Read. For his camp is very great. For his what? Camp is very great. So brothers, there's a multitude coming. You better be, be prepared for that thing. Come on. For he is strong that executed his word. For he is strong that executed his word. Read. For the day of the Lord is great and mm. very terrible. You see that thing? The who day can of abide the, in hold it? Hold on. The day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide in it? Nobody can abide in it. You see that thing? Heavy stuff. Go back to Psalm 23. Psalm 23, verse 5, again. The book of Psalms, 23, verse 5. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You see that thing? Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Give me Psalms 141, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 141, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Let the righteous smite thee, it shall be a kindness. Let him reprove thee, let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil. You see that thing? When, Which? When, hold on. When the righteous smite you, it says it shall be a kindness, meaning when you get corrected. And let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil. Go ahead. Which shall not break my head. We shall not what? Break my head. We shall not break your head. Go ahead. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. So now it says, let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil. We shall not break my head. Go back to Psalm 23. Verse 5 again. The book of Psalms, 23 verse 5. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Because what is the Lord doing with us? He says, he anoints our head with oil. What is the oil? The laws of God. The oil is the laws of God. So we can get our mind right. He says, my cup runneth over. What is that talking about? The blessing. The blessing. Give me that in... Um, hmm. I'll touch on it. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter real quick. Isaiah 50. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 15, I believe. Let me see. We're going to start at verse 10. Isaiah 50, verse 10. Hmm. Isaiah 50, verse 10. Let's start there. The book of Isaiah chapter 60, verse 10. Rejoice. You with Jerusalem and be no, no. glad with her. What verse you at? Isaiah 60. 60 the book of Isaiah. 60. 60. 60 Chapter 60, 10. verse 10. 10. Uh-huh. The book of Isaiah 60, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. That's when they're going to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. Our enemies are going to do that thing. Go ahead. And the kings shall minister unto thee. Uh-huh. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Come on, verse 11. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. Three. They shall not be shut day nor night, uh-huh. that men may bring unto thee the forces of of the Gentiles. The forces of the Gentiles talk they, about, hold on, the forces of the Gentiles is talk about the riches of the nations. The riches of the nations, their gold, their, their everything they got is going to come to us because it belongs to us anyway. Read. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that the kings may be may be brought. That their kings may be brought. Who their kings talk about their president, their nobles. You understand? Their businessmen. They are going to be what? They are going to be laboring. Go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Mm -hmm. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Come on. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary and now make the place of my feet glorious you see that thing the place of my feet glorious go ahead the sons also of them that afflict thee shall come bending unto thee meaning what they're gonna bow down to us read on and our children to our children too go ahead and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Uh And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency. Come on. A joy of many generations. There is a where else thou has been forsaken and hated so that no man went through thee because no nation wanted to help us. They still don't want to help us. Okay? But we are waiting for the for help. We are waiting for help from the Lord of heaven and earth. Read. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles. The milk of the Gentiles took about their wealth. Their wealth. Come on. And shall suck the breast of the of kings. We shall suck the breast of kings. We're going to take everything they got. Come on. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy savior and thy redeemer. Come on. The mighty one of, his, of Jacob. You see that thing? Thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Go back to where he was at now. Psalm 23. The book of Psalms 23, verse 5. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. You see that thing? My cup runneth over. The most that God will take care of us. Thou anointest my, thou anointest my head with oil. Meaning what? The Lord will teach us of his way. 
That is what he's doing right now. Okay? He's preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He has anointing our head with all. What is the all? The laws of God. My cup runneth over. That took about understanding. He's healing us. You understand? He's healing us from our mental hang-ups. That's what the Lord is doing. Give me that in uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Hold on. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. The book of Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Come on. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. You see that thing? This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee. I will de heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. You see that thing? This also goes into what? How they restore my soul. It goes into that. You can put that precept also there. All right. Go back to Jericho. Go back to Psalm 3. I'm almost done. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Read verse 6 now. The book of Psalms 23 verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Give me that in Revelation 21. Revelation chapter 21. And verse, actually, you know what? Hmm. Give me Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27. The book of Daniel chapter 7, verses 27. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom and do and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. Hold on. Whose kingdom. Wait, wait, let me see, let me see. Mm. Let me see where I want to start. I think I might want to start a little bit up. Okay. One second. Give me Daniel 2. Daniel chapter 2. I think I want to start in Daniel 2. Give me Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. Daniel 2 verse 44. The book of Daniel 2 verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed mm -hmm. and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. You see that thing? The kingdom that's coming is going to stand forever. It's never going to fall. Go back to Daniel now. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Read verse 18 again. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever you see that thing but the saints of the most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever even forever and ever jump down to verse 27 the book of daniel to the 7 verse 27 the kingdom and dominion mm. and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Read, verse 28. Hitherto is the end of the matter. Mm -hmm. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me. 
and my countenance changed in me, but I keep mad, but I keep the matter in my heart. You see that thing says hitherto is the end of the matter. Meaning the whole the whole setup of the planet Earth is for the children of Israel to take the kingdom and to rule all nations on earth forever. That is the objective of the most high God for creating nations on earth. That the nation of Israel, we will be the ruling class, the other nations will be the serving class, and we will rule over them forever. That's how the Lord set this whole thing up. And we went back to them. Daniel saw the saints take the kingdom. We're going to take the kingdom. Understand that. Go back to Psalm 23. Last verse. The book of Psalms 23 verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Mm -hmm. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see that thing? When we take the kingdom, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 